Now we will see solved problem number 3 in subnetting. Let's start the session with the outcomes. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to. Outcome number 1, we will subnet the given network based on host requirements. Outcome number 2, we will find the number of networks or number of subnetworks. And outcome number 3, we will find the number of hosts per subnetwork or network. Let's see the 5 steps of subnetting. Here are the 5 steps of subnetting. I request you to pause this video for a while and understand the 5 steps. I hope you have already seen problem number 1 and problem number 2. If not, I request you to please watch that first before coming into problem number 3. It will definitely give you a better understanding. Let's dive into the question now. The question is, subnet the IP address 150.15.0.0 into 500 hosts in each subnet. In the previous problems, we have taken class C IP address. Now we are going to focus on class B IP address. If the first octet of an IP address is between 128 and 191, then it is obviously class B. So this is a perfect example of a class B IP address. So it means we are going to do subnetting for class B. Let's start with step number 1. What is there in step number 1? Identify the class of the IP address and note the default subnet mask. So step number 1 is it is a class B IP address and the default subnet mask is 255.255.0.0. Step number 1 is done. Let's now move on to step number 2. Here we are going to convert the default subnet mask which we identified in step number 1 into binary. When we convert this into binary, we are getting this result because the first octet and the second octet are 255. So all bits in binary are 1 in the first two octets and the remaining two octets are zeros. Step number 2 is done. Let's now move on to step number 3. Here we are going to note the number of hosts required per subnet which is given in the question and find the subnet generator and the octet position. So in the question it is mentioned as 500 hosts required per subnet. So we know the number of hosts required per subnet is 500. And in order to find the subnet generator and the octet position, we need to first convert this number 500 into binary. When we convert this into binary, we will be getting 11111100. So how many bits are there in this binary? There are 9 bits. It means we cannot have a binary number for the equivalent decimal number 500 without 9 bits. So 9 binary bits are compulsorily required in order to get the decimal number 500. We will ensure that now. So I have brought in a calculator here. I will change the option as a programmer calculator. I will type in 500. So the decimal equivalent is 500 and the binary equivalent is 000510100. As I already mentioned, ignore the leading zero. So it should always start with 1. Let's take it from 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 bits are required. So obviously we require 9 bits in order to get the number 500. And what's the next step? We are going to reserve 9 zeros in the new subnet mask. So when we want to generate the new subnet mask, we need to reserve 9 zeros. So obviously I am reserving 9 zeros here. As I already mentioned, we need to start from the right to left. So in the right hand side octet, that is the fourth octet, we have only 8 bits. So I am reserving 8 bits here. And then I am migrating towards the third octet. In the third octet, I am reserving only one zero because I need to reserve only nine bits. So nine zeros are reserved. And what's the next step? We need to fill in all ones in the remaining octet positions. So the remaining values are filled up with ones because a valid subnet mask will be continuous ones followed by continuous zeros and no more ones will appear. And what's the subnet generator? 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. 128, 256, 512. Is that the subnet generator 512? Now if it is 512, will we be having 512 as a value in an IP address or in a subnet mask? No, 512 is not a valid value in an IP address as well as in a subnet mask. So what is the subnet generator? 512 is a correct value only. Here we need to start from 2 power 0. This is 2 power 0, this is 2 power 1. Where is the first one we are encountering when we move from right to left? The first one is appearing in this place. And this place decimal equivalent is 512 only. But we need to start it from here. This is 2 power 0, this is 2 power 1. 2 power 1 is what? 2. So the subnet generator is 2. And what about the octet position? Is the subnet generator in first octet? No. Second octet? No. Is it in the third octet? Yes. So the octet position is 3. 
Please note the subnet generator is 2 only, but the decimal, actual decimal place is 512. What does it mean? It means in our network 512 IP addresses are possible. Let's talk about that later. So we have found the subnet generator and the octet position. So we are done with step number 3. Let's now move on to step number 4, generating the new subnet mask. We have already generated it and what is the decimal equivalent? When all bits are 1 in an octet, it's 255 and this is also 255 and this is, the entire thing is 255 and the place 1 is not used, right? It's 0. So the entire content is 255 minus 1, it's 254. So the third octet in the subnet mask is 254 and the fourth octet is 0. In other words, this is 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 and no 1. So we will be getting 254. So the new subnet mask is 255.255.254.0. In other words, how many ones are there? 8 plus 8, 16, 16 plus 7, it is 23. So in slash notation, slash 23 is the new subnet mask representation. So step number 4 is also over. Now let's move on to step number 5. In step number 5, we will be generating the network ranges, that is the subnets. And for that, we need to use the subnet generator in the appropriate octet position. In the previous examples, the octet position was 4. But here, the octet position is 3. So the increment should be in the third octet. Let's see it now. So we are going to generate the network ranges of subnetworks. And what is the IP address that is given in the question? 150.15.0.0 is the first IP address of the first subnet. And what's the first IP address of the second subnet? Just add the subnet generator in which octet? In the third octet. What is there in the third octet? It's 150.15.0. So 0 is in the third octet. Just add 2 to the 0 will be getting 2 here. So the second subnet starts with 150.15.2.0. And what about the third subnet? Add a 2 to the third octet. So we'll be getting 150.15.4.0, 150.15.6.0, 150.15.8.0 and so on. I hope you can understand this. Now what is the last IP address of the first subnet? The first IP address of the second subnet is starting with 150.15.2.0. The last IP address of this is not 150.15.0.255. It is 150.15.1.255. Please note, it's not 0.255, it's 1.255. Because... 0.255 is a valid IP address in this subnet which can be assigned to the host. That is not the broadcast address because after 0.255 we have 1.0, 1.1 and it goes on. Because how many IP addresses are possible? It's 512. The position of this one is actually 512. So 512 IP addresses are there in each subnet. If it is 0.255, only 256 IP addresses are possible. So we are also including one dot series also. That is the third octet which is one is also included in this subnet. And what about the last address of the second subnet? It's not 2.255, it's 3.255. Because the next IP address is the next subnet which is 4.0. And what about the third subnet's last IP address which is 5.255. The next subnet's last address is 7.255 and the next subnet's last address is 9.255 and it goes on. So we have generated some number of networks wherein each network can have a maximum of 512 IP addresses possible whereas 510 IP addresses can be usable for the host because the first address which is 150.15.0.0 in the first subnet is the network address and 150.15.1.255 is the broadcast address. Now, how many networks are possible here? In order to calculate this, I am going to give you a formula or a shortcut. How many networks are possible? How many hosts are possible? So in the actual subnet mask, this is the class B subnet mask. So the first octet and the second octet are not at all changed. So we are not going to touch these two portions, right? The first two octets remain unchanged. And the changes are made by the new subnet mask only in the third and fourth octet. So a total of 16 bits are there. How many ones are there? How many zeros are there? The number of zeros is for the hosts per network. The number of ones is the number of networks or subnetworks. For example, out of these 16 bits, why we are taking only 16 bits? Out of 32 bits, the first 16 bits in the original subnet mask is just retained as such. 
and the new subnet mask is making change only in the third octet and in the fourth octet. So the change is only within these two octets, and that's why we are taking these 16 bits. And what about the number of hosts per network and the number of networks? Nine zeros we are reserving. So two power number of zeros means the number of hosts per network. Actually, this is possible host. We need to reduce to y because the first IP address and the last IP address are not used. So we can have only 510 usable hosts per network. And what about the number of networks? How many networks that is possible like 0, 0.0, 2.0, 4.0, 6.0, 8.0, 10.0, 12.0, 14.0 and it goes on. How many networks are possible? We have 2 power 7. The number of ones is the answer. So 2 power number of ones here is 2 power 7. 2 power 7 means it's 128 subnets are possible. So we can have 128 subnetworks wherein in each subnetwork we can have a maximum of 512 IP addresses or hosts possible. So we need to reduce 2 from this because the first address and the last address are not used. In the subnetting examples, I am using the terms hosts and IP addresses interchangeably. So when I say 512 hosts per network we can get, it means 512 IP addresses we can get. Since IP address is for the host and host needs IP address, I am using these two terms interchangeably. In question, they may ask how many hosts are possible or how many IP addresses are possible. In this example, for representation purpose, we have mentioned 2 power 9 is equal to 512 hosts per network is possible. It doesn't mean 500 hosts can be there in one network, only 510 can be there. I have been mentioning this right from the class full addressing topic. Always we need to subtract 2 from the set of IP addresses we get. Because the first address of any subnet is the network address and the last address of any subnet is the broadcast address. Before we conclude, let's see the homework question. And we know we have solved this problem like this. The homework question is, what is the network address of the third subnet for this example and what is the broadcast address of the second subnet? So just see, this is the second subnet and this is the third subnet. What is the network address of this subnet? That is the third subnet and what is the broadcast address of the second subnet? Pause this video for a while, analyze your answer and post your answer in the comment section. I hope now you know how to subnet the given network based on the host requirement. In this case, we have taken a class B example. In the next problem, we will take class A example. And we know how to find the number of networks that is 2 power number of ones. And we know how to find the number of hosts per network which is 2 power the number of zeros. And that's it guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the lecture and thank you for watching.